Here are five things I like about my Sony a7 IV. Hey guys, my name is John Sparkman. I am a wedding photographer in Birmingham in the UK. If it's your first time, consider subscribing and stick around. It's pretty much all I talk about nowadays. I picked up the Sony a7 IV uh, about uh, March this year. It was on pre-orders for a very, very, very long time. And I was stuck with using a Sony a7 III for the majority of my wedding and event work. Now, this is a very good camera, the a7 III, but the a7 IV just had a couple of things extra which could really help me out. Today, I'm gonna to go through the five or six things, I might be able to find a few more off the top of my head, that I really like about this camera, which separates it from its predecessor, and to be fair, all of the Fujifilm cameras I had before this one. So coming in at number one, this is a strong one for people who use Sony cameras on a daily basis. The menu system of the a7 IV is so much better. Uh, when I was using the a7 III, uh, you have to navigate sideways through 23, 24, many, many pages of menu settings. The curse and the joy of using Sony is that everything, everything inside the machine is configurable. You can change every setting to do something else. You can assign certain things in certain modes. It is the most modular, internally modular system anyway, I've ever used on a camera. Now on the a7 IV, they have really taken the time to go through and filter and organize that menu system. There's still a load of stuff in there. It took me nearly an hour and uh, great help from people online on YouTube and I'll link them down below on configuring your camera to set it up first time. But just going through and being able to set it up how you want, it is actually slightly faster. If you press the bin icon, the C4 on uh, this camera at least, the bin icon on the back of the camera when in menu, you will see an explanation of whatever they're talking about. So when they have silly abbreviated names of set priority, face adjustment, secondary, you know, all this stuff, it would tell you what each one does. Still not 100% on what every single mode means, but it is a great step in the right direction. And a, a little sub note to this, you can save the entire menu system to your computer. So there is a function inside the menu, obviously, uh, where you can insert an SD card. You can copy the entire menu structure, what you set up to configure to all the buttons, all the modes, video, photo, all of that. Save it into a file, which you can then archive away on your computer. If you ever mess up or if you, <laughs> It can happen. If you ever mess up or you have to reload your camera or you have a second A7 IV, pop the SD in, reload that file and your camera is configured again like you used to have it. Number two is the tracking on this camera. This camera is nuts for tracking. And I'm not just talking video. Things like the speed that this thing, there we go. The speed that this thing focuses at is unreal. Now I'm not even using any Sony glasses. It's a Tamron wide angle lens. I've got a Zeiss 85 and a Samyang 2470 somewhere around. It's still absolutely fine. You can set it so you have uh, facial tracking, which would be a square around my face. You can then have eye tracking. So it will find the eyes within the square and then focus on that instead. Uh, you can then have wide modes. You can have a uh, zone focus and you can have a load of different stuff. In video, it just shoots wide, so you tell it where the majority of the work is, the majority of thing happening. So at the moment, I've got a square just like this on my face. And as long as it can see my eye, it won't focus on anything else until, there you go. And then straight back. And that's how fast it is. And although it's great for video, it's real smooth. You can actually enable a lot of these functions for photography as well. So I have a custom button on the back that I will normally be shooting in uh, this wider zone mode. And then I can flick over to a smaller, I think it's called expanded flexible spot. You tell it roughly where something's gonna be. It will look for details around that area. And then if you're holding down the back button, as long as I'm holding it down, I've got subject tracking. So the person's face doesn't even need to be in subject. It will track inanimate objects. So cars going past, or you can focus on a flower pot, or I don't know, you can focus on anything. If it's focusing on a subject and they're moving and someone moves in front, it will still focus on that person. It doesn't then get carried away with the next one. It's incredible. Uh, and you can even uh, change things like the speed at which it rack focuses. And in all my years of using Canon and Fuji and then Sony, I've never had something so responsive and so actually intuitive to use. Number three, and I'm shooting it right now, just kind of a quick look. We are shooting in 4K, 25 frames a second, 422, 
10 bit S log 3. So that's a mouthful, there's a lot of abbreviations going on there. Essentially, this is a mammoth, huge file format which shoots really flat profile, which I can grade afterwards. I've got a load of nice uh, LUTs which I can put in my post processing workflow, and I can get the maximum creativity. It's like almost shooting raw with photography, but I can apply it to video. I believe if I add in an HDMI on the side and then an Atomos Ninja 5 at the top, I think I can shoot in ProRes, uh, maybe even ProRes RAW to an SSD, so I can shoot like a terabyte of footage. I mean, I probably wouldn't go that far, but at the moment, shooting internally to, yes, to SD cards at the same time. Now, a little side note, you did see me looking to the side there. That is the flippy screen I've got on this. The A7 III has the, albeit I really like it, almost like a waist level finder, so you can flip it upright and look straight down. I actually quite like that for taking candids at weddings, for instance. Flippy screen, which means I can do video now without needing an external monitor up top, which is just extra weight and it's a little bit more compact. Uh, it's touchscreen as well, so I can adjust my focus points just by poking at it. I can set the tracking, I can, all of this stuff. And it's a really bright, really high level screen. Sub sub point as well, the viewfinder at the top uh, can do a high refresh rate. I think it's like 120 hertz at this point. Uh, small caveat, which I only figured out recently, uh, it does drop the quality of the output coming out of the viewfinder quite dramatically. It's designed for sports photography. It's not designed for just having a really nice high-end uh, viewfinder. I put it back down to its standard. I think that's 50 or 60 hertz. Quality improved massively. So if you're getting a blurry viewfinder, that trick, drop it down. Now I'm gonna to touch on something slightly wider in the Sony ecosystem. And one of the reasons why I changed over uh, one of them coming up in a second, but this one is that Sony has what they call an open mount protocol. So if you ever take off the lens and you have a little look inside, just in there, there are a load of little pins there. That is the way that the autofocus and the focus confirmation and all the information from here connects into here. What Sony has done is they've publicly released uh, that information on how the lenses should connect to the camera to all companies who are making them, every single one. So a lot of other companies will either charge royalties or decline based on you know quality control, in internal quality control. No one more famous than Fujifilm, who are notorious for not letting third-party companies make lenses for them unless they go manual focus. By having this open protocol, removing those royalties, making the information knowledge, I don't know you know, the reason why they did it. Everyone is making lenses for Sony before they make them for any other camera. That's the reason why I've got the Samyang 24 to 70. It's only available currently for the Sony E-mount because it's something which they can just have a look at and make something for. So I'm now getting uh, third party lenses, which are cheaper, much, much cheaper than own brand ones, work exactly the same, focus is the same, everything's the same. Another thing to point out, a little bit of a, a back step towards my four years with Fujifilm and the batteries in this thing are monstrous. This is the uh, FPZ100, I believe it's called. Big old batteries, look the same size as DSLR Canon batteries. You can shoot a thousand plus pictures on it, even at the 33 megapixels this camera can do. You can shoot this uh, entire monologue to camera. You can do that in 10 bit, 422, all that stuff. Uh, I've done three of these in a row and my battery has dropped 40%. It's not bad for about an hour's worth of recording on internal battery. And lastly, I even forget what number we're on now. The ports and the size of this camera are unreal. You've got a uh, full-sized HDMI, which is brilliant, mic in, audio out, uh, USB-C with power delivery for high-speed external charging. They're not recommending you use a dummy battery in the bottom of the camera anymore. Just plug a power bank in the side. You can get a 20,000 milliamp power delivery battery bank for, I don't know, 50 pounds nowadays. Stick it on a little rig or a cage or just charge it when, you know, when you've got a chance. It's got a USB port as well, traditional style, just for connecting. And it just a load of connectivity, which makes the camera really ideal, really adaptive and really handy to use on a daily basis. Now, I do still use the a7 III and the IV for weddings. Uh, I'm yet to upgrade to two a7 IVs. Typically, I have one camera which is much better than the other. Then I'll upgrade the old one, so it then becomes, you know, whatever's new at that point. And primarily for weddings, at the moment, I use the a7 III with an 85mm on the front. I use the a7 IV with a 24-70. Swap it out for this wide angle if I need to do group shots. 
uh, and I may be buying a Prime, the 35 1.4 from Sigma, to go on it instead. I do quite like that, uh, that open lifestyle, you know, the open aperture lifestyle. If you like these videos and you want to stick around, consider subscribing. I'm a Sony wedding photographer after all. If that's the kind of stuff you like, see you in a future video.